What's up everybody? Before we get into today's review, I just wanted to go over a couple of quick announcements. First off is for anybody who does not follow the Woodward Reviews Facebook page, you really should because you would have been some of the first to see the update that I am going to have to change my upload schedule here for a little while. Nothing too major, it's still going to be a regular upload schedule, it's just that I'm going to have to start doing it every two weeks as opposed to every week. And it's simply because my actual work schedule has been so crazy since I got this new job that it's just become really difficult to watch, review, and edit something in amount of time with work and then doing that once a week. But yeah, I just wanted to let you guys know that since my upload schedule has been really sporadic lately, it's not because... I'm getting done with the channel or anything, I've just been busy. Secondly, I want to shout out once again my buddy over at the channel of Pure Panphobia. He is still continuing his walkthrough series of four distinct character builds that he himself created for the game Dark Souls. He is now on to the second build that he created, so he's making his way through this series, and if you haven't checked it out yet and you are interested in gaming and gaming channels, you should definitely check him out at Pure Panphobia. The link to that will be down in the description. That's all I have as far as announcements go, so with that all out of the way, let's get back to the regularly scheduled programming. Thank you. Seeing as how today's topic is based on a comic book series and people tend to get really defensive about comic book adaptations or just book adaptations because this film or television show is not entirely faithful to the source material, I'm going to go ahead and put it like this. If your argument is... This is nothing like the comic book series. The comic book series did this differently and this show is a complete disgrace. Then my rebuttal will be this. No, I just don't give a fuck. It's just that. Thank you for joining me once again and as some of you may have noticed the title cards for my videos typically have songs in them that have something in one way or another to do with what I'm reviewing and I for some reason used a My Chemical Romance song? Well that is because today's topic of Umbrella Academy is based on a Dark Horse comic series that was penned and created or co-created by Gerard Way who was the singer of the now disbanded My Chemical Romance. But anyway, what is this show about? It is the story of seven people who grew up in a house called the Umbrella Academy where they were simply named one through seven and they were trained to hone their superpowers and they were essentially a superhero team. But since their childhood was so awful because of their father figure who adopted all of them, they are now just a bunch of broken adults that kind of want nothing to do with each other. But they must finally all come together so that they can stop the apocalypse. And there is a whole lot more story and plot lines than what I just told you there. But if I were to go through all of it, we would be here for an hour. First and foremost, this show is just fun. It is just a really fun time. One perfect example of that is even during these really tense and brutal and well choreographed fight scenes, a big chunk of the soundtrack is just 80s pop and really obscure indie rock songs. Like you can tell Gerard Way was just like in there like, I want this song, this song, this song, this song. And the producers were probably like, whoa, are you sure about that? But to get into more detail about what I enjoy about it, almost all of the characters are really well written and there are a couple that are definite standouts, but none of them are bad at all. Some standouts for me would be Klaus, 
who is one of the seven in Umbrella Academy. Even though I said they all just got named one through seven, they do all eventually get names that their mother gave them. And Klaus, his power is that he can communicate with the dead. And because of this, he is constantly being bombarded by the spirits of just all these people. So as soon as we meet him, he is deep in the throes of drug addiction, just trying to drown out all of the voices of the dead. His character arc is so just big. Like, he is this scummy little weasel when we meet him. And then at the end, you feel so much for him. But he's also really funny. He is, without a doubt, the comedy relief character of the show. And if comedy relief characters are not done right, they can be so annoying. But thankfully, the show is well written enough that his punchlines and his quips and his lines were really funny. Another couple of standouts would be Cha-Cha and Hazel, who are two people from the future who came back to kill one of the members of Umbrella Academy who did some stuff when he jumped through time and so now he has like a bounty on his head. Like I said, there's a lot going on in this show. One of them, Cha-Cha, she is actually played by Mary J. Blige, which I thought was really weird and random, but I mean, she did a good job. The back and forth between the characters of Hazel and Cha-Cha is really funny. And they aren't like, you know, bumbling comedic relief characters. But whenever they're on screen, it's almost always a good time. Some less impressive of the characters would probably be number five, who is the one of the Umbrella Academy that does not have a name. And that's because he disappeared and now he's back and he never got a name. He looks like a 13 year old boy, but he's actually like closer to 60 year old, years old, but that has to do with the whole time travel thing. I'm not gonna get into it. He's not a bad character by any means. He also definitely has a character arc that is well-defined and realized. And he's not a bad character. He's just, for a large part of the show, his main character trait is he's just kind of an asshole. But like, he, you, you see where he's coming from. Like, he's very one-track minded. His goal, his main goal is that he knows the apocalypse is coming. So he's trying to bring his entire dysfunctional family together. Even though they want nothing to do with each other, the only reason they are all together right now is for the funeral of their father. But he's trying to bring them together as a team because he knows that the apocalypse is coming and he wants to stop it. And with that very one-track mindedness, he just kind of comes across as a jerk a lot of the time, but you still see why he's acting that way. Another character that I feel like was kind of weaker was the character of Vanya, who was played by Ellen Page. She's the character that we kind of follow, but she's kind of boring. Like, for most of it, she just kind of delivers her lines like this. I mean, there are scenes where she's, she's like, crying, but Ellen Page's acting style is really just kind of deadpan, and this, this is what she sounds like most of the time. Like, I'm not knocking the actress, like, as a whole, but a lot of times in this show, she's just very flat. I was thoroughly surprised by how much I enjoyed this show. I was expecting it to be decent at best, but that was mainly just because I knew nothing about the plot. I just knew what the source material was titled. I didn't know anything about it, but I was so pleased at the fact that it was so damn good. With 10 mostly hour long episodes, None of the episodes felt like filler. Everything felt important. And really, the only negatives I could possibly say is that 
The plot gets a little convoluted, but not too terribly bad. It's just kind of bounces back and forth because of the time travel aspect. And a couple of performances that were good, just not as great as a couple of the other performances. So, I'm probably starting to sound like a broken record when it comes to reviewing these shows, but when it comes to the Netflix original series, The Umbrella Academy, you should definitely binge it. You know, eventually, I'm probably going to hit a wall because I'm having way too good of a streak with these TV shows, with almost all of them being binge it and only one skim it. Eventually, I'm, I know I'm going to run into something really bad, and I am not prepared for that. So, have you seen Umbrella Academy yet? If you have, let me know down in the comments what you thought about it. Go ahead and check out my social media. The links to all of that will be down in the description. And while you're doing all of that, don't forget to hit the like and the subscribe so that I can see you guys next time. And... Like I said, this show has an amazing, like, 80s pop soundtrack, so good luck getting this song from the show out of your head. I think we're